Now, speaking of legends, since we're still talking about them, what about females? I mean, what about a, a Luna Vachon, a Leilani Kai, you know, a Fabulous Moolah, those kind coming in the Legends Series? Because I know we got the guys. I know you're doing those very well. What about the ladies? Well, uh, <coughs> Fabulous Moolah, for example, we are actually talking to, you know, talking to uh, her people about that. Um, we want to bring some ladies in, and I think we are going to bring some in. I, I think that we have to seed see them in, in, in a way. You know, because uh, obviously we, we won't sell anywhere near as many of the ladies as we do with the guys. But we are going to get them in because, again, they, they are, you know, an integral part of the history of WWE. Yeah. And as a design group, our goal is to do every significant, you know, superstar there ever is or ever was. Yeah. So, so yes, I, I think you are. We'll, you will see some women, both more women, I think, both in, in the elite lines and, and, and in the legend lines as we go forward. Um, would you consider making basic style legends with elite style accessories in the future? Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting concept. For us, it's kind of philosophical. You know, we've always thought that the, the, the basic figures were in-ring figures. So we really hadn't thought too much about giving them um, out-of-ring accessories. And we kind of reserved those for the elite to make them stand out from the basic figures. Uh, as we go forward, I know we're going to be doing more accessories with basic figures in, in other ways. You know, Maybe they'll be at that price point or possibly uh, basic figures with accessories maybe at another price point, for example. Significant accessories like uh, you know, stretcher matches and things like that. You know, With a figure that maybe wasn't a stretcher max versus you know, just kind of throwing them in there to give you added value. We always, our philosophy always is to make sure the accessory you give with the figure is relevant to that figure. So when you guys look at it, you'll go, oh yeah, I remember the stretcher match from blah. Right. And, you know, and, and it's significant to you guys as collectors. So, that's, you know. Well, one of the things that I noticed that, that we were talking about a little bit before is, you know, the Legends line is, is very very expensive. I mean, and, and, I, and I know that. And, and I think a lot of collectors know that too. What about maybe scaling it back a little bit, doing a Legends line in the Elite Series, giving them a little bit more articulation for collectors to be able to pose different, and, and bringing those out in the series for later on? Is that a possibility? Well, funny you should say that, because that's really one of the things that we're really thinking strongly about is, is, you know, the Legends line, we want to make sure that we keep them significant and that we don't dig too deep and get too obscure and too quickly. You know, and of course, you know, there's a lot to be said by, you know, not over proliferating in any way, you know, shape right. or form. So it is a fine line between keeping you guys hungry and at the same time, you know, giving you giving you good compelling figures that you feel like you're being satisfied as you're being collected. Yeah, so you're not getting cheated on our end. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, we really have, you know, um, that's one of our key things is, you know, we want to create that balance to what we do. So I think in the future, I think you will see us kind of backing off a little bit on, on things like a Legends, and we're going to be, be much more strategic about them. You may see maybe smaller series, for example, or as you said, we might even think about combining them in with possibly in with some of our other series, uh, Elite, for example. So we can give you both more strategic um, Legends offerings, but we can also give you more Elite, strategic Elite offerings, because we can also, you know, maybe that fifth or that sixth figure that we have in that series, too, you know, is maybe not as compelling as it could be. So right. so we really want to make sure that we, you know, they give really good, compelling figures every month and kind of, you know, listen, uh, just some fellas just don't sell as well as the other ones do. And we want to avoid just throwing people into the mix just to fill out the mix. Right, right. That's really what we don't want to get into that kind of a scenario, you know, so. Okay, let me ask you this. Speaking of going from the Legends line and, and the Elite line to the more kid-friendly line, I mean, you all debuted today, the Rumblers, upcoming truck that's going to be coming out which is right there behind us that actually turns into an arena in itself which is a pretty cool idea yep. it has its own little titan tron its own little ramp that kind of thing how many assortments of rumblers can we expect each year well i, I think we're in 2000 and 2011 i believe we're going to be doing about 40 to 45 figures okay so i think you're going to see they're going to wave maybe the th three waves of figures are going to be coming out with those um, quite a few, actually, for a launch. I mean, of course, you know, it's a kid-focused line, so we have to make sure that we um, that we stay with the most compelling superstars. Right. So, you know, that the, the, the kids want to buy. Um, and that's really the key for that as we go forward. And then, Wix, we'll be some, doing some redecoing things because I know the collectors are still going to collect them, right? Yes. <laughs> and we are a toy company. Yeah. And, and, you know, obviously, you know, a, a, you know, a, a huge percentage of our business is to the 
to the kiddies right. and their future collectors too, by the way. Right. Exactly. So these are the guys we want to bring into. Uh, Rumblers is really unique for us. It, it, it expands our demographic down to younger than even WWE thought that we were. Now we're talking about going after five and six year olds now with Rumblers, which is way below where anybody thought when we first started this line that we were going to go. And but what we're finding with Flex Force. And, and some of the things we've done that, that yeah, we're, we're starting to be able to do that now, get younger guys into, into, so when they do turn seven or eight years old, then they start turning into collectors and they start buying them for the, you know, the heritage and everything else going on. But right now they just love to play with this stuff. So I'm starting to become a fan of them. Actually, they're great. I love them. <laughs> they're fun. You come on, you can, they're over they're the top. They're you can do they're different with them. Right. And WWE allows us to do things with them that they wouldn't normally allow us to do right. in their basic line because they, they, they do have a certain, you know, um, way that they want their superstars portrayed on a daily basis. And in rumblers and places that we can go over the top, we can shoot them out of things, we can have them bust through, you know, Titan Trons and the and cages like and things like that. We can use them as projectiles and things like that. And we're coming up with all kinds of really fun ways of playing with them and they're, and they're caricatures, you know. That's what they're supposed to be and that's what wrestling is all about, is over the top action. So that's what, you know, that thing really is. And we really think this is going to be the best way for us to bring new kids into the WWE world at a younger age and you know, establish them as collectors so those guys can carry the mantle for you guys <laughs> in 20 years, you know? Now let me ask you this. At um, Toys R Us, there is the six pack of the Rey Mysterio. Yes. And that is one of the things that one of the, the forum's questions is, will we see anything else similar to that in the future along the lines of like the history of the take, you know, Undertaker or you know, the evolution of Taker, that kind of thing? Yeah, we'd love to do that. And that, you know, that Ray item for us was very successful for us. You know, we get people asking us about that all the time, you know. Of course, the Ray Mysterio fans loved it. It was right. like, a, you know, it was like a walk through history. Where else can you, you know, get the entire collection if you, you know, of the history of Ray Mysterio in one place? It's, you know, and he's the perfect guy for it because he changes his outfit so often. Often. Right. It's a little more difficult to do that kind of a thing, but retrospective, historical retrospectives uh, of Undertaker, for example, um, Cena, um, you know, there's a number of guys that, uh, you know, that the we brood. do that with, yeah, that, 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 that lend itself to that, that kind of a thing. You know, it certainly has to be a superstar where somebody's going to want to buy six of them. Well, you Hunter, know. you could do Hunter because he started out as Hunter Hearst Hemsley, worked oh, yeah. his way all the way up to become Shawn a DX, Michaels. yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, Shawn Michaels, you know, um, yeah, there's a number of them that are perfectly suited for that kind of thing. So I think, yes, you will see some more of the retrospective things coming out as we go forward, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Now, another question from the figures board is, what is the current status of getting a referee figure made, which we talked a little bit earlier about, like like a Charles Robinson, that kind of per people, uh, perhaps packed in a playset ring or a build-a-figure kind of kind of series? What can we see with that? Uh, definitely in rings. I think that's a perfect place to kind of to put a referee. As one of the things we've talked about is an added value for a ring, for example, or maybe it's an exclusive for somebody to give them a referee. Um, yeah, that's that's really a you know, a perfect way to do it. And um, unfortunately, I forgot the second half of your question. Oh. So could you ask it again? <laughs> like, like, like in a play ring or a build a, a, build a, oh, a build set? A figure, yes. Uh, you know, build a figure is another thing we were talking about pretty seriously. And we do it. We've done it in some of our other brands very successfully. Uh, we've done it in our DC brands and stuff, and the collectors like it. Um, we're, we're trying to figure out the best way to do that. Um, but I think that that's something you, that, that you very well could see in the future as a build-a-figure kind of a concept. Because those are one of those things, that, you know, those are kind of more marketing-driven things, you know, that helps sell not one figure, it helps right. sell six figures, oh, right, exactly. and then you get to seven one, you know. It's and a very strong marketing strategy, so I think you are, we are talking about how we're going to do that and what way we can do that. Uh, maybe build a figure or maybe build something else, right. you know. Um, I always thought that the, you know, the building brawl concept was an interesting concept that Jax did. It. Eh, not necessarily the way they did it, necessarily, but those kinds of things. Maybe it's building something other than a figure, obviously. You know.